Warning, this is not intended as a substitute for professional medical care and diagnosis. There are always risks associated with weight training, and none of the instructions or meal plans should be performed without approval from your healthcare professional. As with all exercise programs, you assume certain risks with your health and safety. If you choose to participate in these risks, you do so of your own free will and accord. Michael McBath is a certified personal trainer with National Academy of Sports Medicine. He is not a medical doctor, and nothing in this video should be misconstrued to mean otherwise. Muscles of Motivation is not responsible for any injuries or death as a result of using these techniques. Muscles of motivation, baby. Let somebody else throw in that towel, because I ain't throwing it in tonight. Okay, so remember, today is gauntlet day. It is chest gauntlet and the shoulder gauntlet. Now, when I say gauntlet, it don't mean do your whole entire exercise in the gauntlet. It means find an exercise that targets the primary body part like if you notice dumbbell bench press targets the whole entire upper chest so when i do these other exercises like the decline and incline and flies that's just working on the interior but i've already worked my chest out but when i do the shoulder gauntlet because i'm doing my shoulder shrugs i've already worked the entire shoulder so whatever else i do after that i'm just working the interior of it like the little details of it so right now we're going to jump into the shoulder gauntlet i love this one because I don't get tired when I do this. I can do a million reps. Instead of doing 100, I end up doing about 300 reps on this. So as you see, the highest amount of dumbbells that my gym offer is 100. I can go up past 100, and when I go to other gyms, uh, I won't name drop because they're not paying me, but when I go to other gyms or whatever, I usually work out like with like 120, 125. The highest I think I've ever worked out with was probably like 135. So now I'm doing shoulder shrugs. I start off with the 100 pound dumbbells and I end up doing, I think I do like 20 to 30 reps. I do it to it really hurts too. I feel it hurts, so I feel a burn. And when I hit that burn, I start slowing down a little bit so I get that extra burn. So you notice on the shoulder shrugs, my rest period is a lot shorter than my dumbbell bench press because the dumbbell bench press takes a lot more out of me. My shoulders are a lot stronger than my chest. I'm pretty sure that's how it is for everybody else too. If you got strong shoulders, you can move a lot of weight. I was once told by a guy, he's a he was a 195, and he looked like he was probably about 235. And I mean, the guy was a beast, and he was bench pressing like 410 pounds. I'm talking about like that's what he was working out with, and uh, we call him Big Nate. He said, "Well." The way I got that way is because I always worked my shoulders out. I figured if I had strong shoulders, then, you know, my chest and all that could be compensated. And I tend to find that true. And I'm only resting like 10 to 30 seconds. Like I am limited my rest as much as possible because I want to see my shoulders pop. I want to see the veins. I want to see the grow. I want to get the sweat. And this is why I tell you I don't have to do too much cardio because I don't rest a lot during my weight resistant training or my weight lifting training for those who don't know what weight resistance is. But that's why I don't have to do a lot of cardio because this is my cardio because I'm doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of reps. More reps than you probably ever heard of anybody doing. And so now I'm at 95 and I'm doing probably about 30 to 40 reps. And as you notice on the last 10, it's slow pace. And then I jump down to the 90s. I do the same thing, slow pace, somewhere between 20 to 30 reps. And then I jump down to the 85s, somewhere between 30 to 40 reps, slow pace. Then I jump down to the 80s, same thing. But this time I start off slow pace and then I speed it up on the last 20. So like I'm switching it up every time I'm hitting something. So my muscles are getting very confused. It's like if you were in a maze and it was two people in a maze and somebody was running north and somebody was running south, you know, eventually they're gonna end up running at each other and colliding. 
So that's what I'm doing with my muscles. I'm just confusing the hell out of them. Make sure I'm getting that good pump in. And then I jump down to the 65s. Now I do about 20 to 30 here because my rest period from 70 to 65 was a lot shorter than the rest of them. And I'm starting to get really fatigued, but I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm mentally feeling good because I'm looking good and I'm pushing myself through it. So after I go from the 65s, I go to the 60s. And after I hit the 60s, I'm doing these for about 20 reps, 20 to 30 reps. And after I hit my 20 to 30 reps here, I go down to the 50. And I just do like 40. I think I do about 40 reps, but I do a mixture of slow pace, fast pace, medium pace is the key. Like you remember I said muscle confusing. So my muscles don't know what's going on. So as you notice, I'm starting to get this extra stupid looking pump. I'm starting to sweat a lot. I've only been working out for probably about 25 to 30 minutes, but I'm drenched. I've looked like I've ran a mile or something, but this is all off weight training. When I do this, I like to call this uh, burning fat with less cardio, with basically no cardio, if you really want to be specific about it. So after this, I'm feeling really pumped. I'm feeling really jacked. So I go on into the incline dumbbell bench press. Now I want to go heavy, but I don't want to go crazy because I want to get a lot of reps in because I want my muscles to pop and I'm, I'm working to get very lean. Like I want to lean out. What I do right here, I end up doing three sets of 15, which I actually exceed 15. Remember, I always say I have myself set a minimum, like that is the minimum, but I always try to exceed the minimum. If you put that in your head mentally, that's how you would think and that's how you would live and that's how you will have success. Exceed the minimum. So I start off with a 55 right here and I'm feeling really good. So I end up doing 20 reps. And after I do 20 reps here, as you notice, I take the weights over to the decline bench press because I'm gonna do the same amount of weights on the decline that I did on the incline just to even it out. You know, I'm trying to get these even portions of my body. So when I do do this bodybuilding competition, everything will be symmetrically right. So after that, I jump into the 60s on the incline bench press and I do these for a total of, I think I put about 17 to 18 reps in right here. And these are the 60s. After I finish these, I carry them over to the decline of bench press because I'm going to use the same weight as I said before. And so then I come back and I grab a 65. Now the minimum is 15, but I'm feeling really good. So I end up doing these a total of 17 to 18 reps. So once I'm finished with this, I move on to the decline. I start out with the 55s. I end up hitting the 55s 20 times. So I exceed the minimum. As you notice, I'm starting to do it at a certain pace. I'm starting to pause, I'm starting to slow down, I'm starting to do all different types of pace. And you will notice this throughout the workout, like my pace changed very frequently. And that's just because I know exactly what type of pump I need to do to get that type of results. Like I always try to make it harder for me. Like I don't wanna be able to get up there and just push it fast, push it fast, push it fast. Sometimes I wanna slow it down and make my muscles work, make my muscles burn. So after I do this, I jump up to the 60s. And I end up doing the 60s, I get 13 reps before my arms start to get a little tired, a little weak. You can tell I'm struggling because I'm switching up the pace. So I set them down, I rest for, I think I rest about 15 to 30 seconds, come back, and I end up doing a total of, I think somewhere between eight and 10 reps extra. So I ended up with 23 reps or 25 reps. I really just don't count after that point once I've don't meet the minimum, I don't count. I just go into it burns because I know I'm gonna actually exceed the minimum. So after that, I jump to the 65s. And when I jump to the 65s, I end up doing the same thing. I end up hitting 13 reps. So then I set the weights down, then I jump back in it, and I end up doing a total of eight more here. So I ended up with a total of 21 reps, 21 to 22 reps. Like I said, I stopped counting. You can count if you want to, but I always go past the minimum. Be sure to watch part two of the next video. You can find the link for it in the description below. Motivation, baby.
Who can't do it? They can't do it, but we can. Make sure you follow me and subscribe.